tuning in. For the two of you in the audience who don't know, Sean Atwood was banned from YouTube yesterday for violating the norms of society. I mean, the norms of the YouTube community guidelines. So unsurprisingly, he's been busy on Twitter rallying his troops, ensuring his supporters tag YouTube, and I thought we'd take a little look at what's going on together, because a lot of people don't have Twitter. So obviously Sean Atwood has blocked me on Twitter, and I can't view this myself, but I have managed to bypass his excellent security by just going to his account while I'm logged out. Just to say, this is not about making fun of Mr Atwood, we're just going to review the appeal tactics of a public figure who has had their channel deleted in a very public fashion. But I have to say I was quite amused to see that he's hashtagging the phrases censorship and human rights in some of his tweets addressing YouTube. He's really going for that martyrdom thing. Human rights have not been abused here, unless he's abused mine also by blocking me on Twitter. But I'll be fair, it is about all he can do at this stage, is play the martyr. Some of the other things he's doing though are unlikely to be helpful to his case, in my opinion. Let me know what you think down in the comments. So we'll get stuck in, and please don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button even if you're here just for the schadenfreude. So we've got the first hint that Mr Atwood was appealing when he posted this tweet yesterday. Presumably immediately after his stomach fell out of his rear end upon receiving the news that his channel was banned. Although personally, I don't believe this should have really been a surprise to Mr Atwood. He says in his first tweet on the topic, My YouTube channel of 13 years deleted for cyberbullying, re videos exposing child sex abuse in court slash media documented cases. Please tweet your concerns to Team YouTube. I'm an activist and author who works in schools educating kids. I got three violations for one trailer. So even there he says he's exposing child abuse in court slash media documented cases, therefore he is not exposing child abuse. But the rest of it is fair enough. He's making people aware of the situation. He claims it's cyberbullying, and then he helpfully gives us a running commentary of the appeal process as we go forward. He does try to galvanise the troops by tweeting out, Thanks to your tweets and Team YouTube, the YouTube policy team is having a second look. And then you can see YouTube has said there, Thanks for the tag. We've gone ahead and passed this along to our policy team for a second look. We appreciate your patience in the meantime. So you can see that it's actually nothing to do with people tweeting. This is simply been done because he tagged Team YouTube on Twitter. Team YouTube respond to creators of any size channel from zero subs upwards. So this isn't promising for Mr Atwood on its own. It is certainly an attempt to galvanise the troops though. He then goes on to say, After consulting my lawyer and advisors, I have filed an appeal with YouTube, which is attached. Huge thanks to everyone continuing to tweet their concerns to Team YouTube, re the termination of my channel. I'm blown away by the tweets, hashtag censorship, hashtag human rights, because you've got to get those hashtags in there. So if Mr Atwood's lawyer and advisors are advising him to file an appeal with YouTube, I'm in the wrong job because I could have advised him that. But this is where he shows us his actual appeal. and. In my opinion, it's not good. He could have done a hell of a lot better with this, but this is his actual appeal now, and I don't mean to be too mean, but even reading this out loud feels like kicking a man while he's down. But then I remember his attempts at getting his critics deplatformed, and any sympathy that I might have had disappears. And you've got to remember, this is his appeal in his own words that he has publicly posted to Twitter. He's written, the violations revolve around news slash educational coverage of high profile sex abuse court cases documented in the media, e.g. Epstein. So high profile sex abuse cases that are documented in the media, so he doesn't expose anything. We can now finally put that one to bed. He has now admitted that he doesn't expose anything. He goes on to say, your guidelines provide an exception for debating high profile officials or leaders content featuring debates or discussions of topical issues concerning individuals who have positions of power, dot dot dot. After the first strike, I requested guidance from YouTube. None came. I visited Google HQ in London. 
only to be told to contact support. So he's not exactly high up in YouTube it seems. As a precautionary measure, I deleted 40% of my channel, almost 60 million views. I completely stopped covering the Epstein case with no intention to resume. And we also saw that he deleted all the Kali Diamond videos in the last couple of weeks as well. He says, I educated my team on cyberbullying and interviewed a cyberbullying activist. A cyberbullying activist who actively bullies people on YouTube, which YouTube will be able to see, no doubt, if they look at it on their end. This is the cyberbullying activist who says that I'm too crafty to get arrested for hate speech because I just don't say any hate speech. It's the same person that actually tried to get me arrested for making videos about Sean Atwood. Now, Mr. Atwood goes on to say, It goes against the spirit of YouTube to bombard a good citizen of 13 years with multiple strikes on all deleted videos. Well, I don't think it does go against the spirit of YouTube, but that's another story altogether. He says, I've learned my lesson and have no intention of covering sex abuse cases. If the channel were restored, I can resume educating young people about the dangers of drugs and crime. So considering that all his followers who are supporting him on Twitter are pretty much all of them talking about what a brave activist and fighter he is, and he even called himself an activist during these tweets about all this, he's offering to jack in the activism side of things pretty damn quickly if YouTube will just give him back his channel. He's debasing himself completely with this, promising to behave himself, promising never to talk about sexual abuse ever again, and saying that he's going to be a drugs education channel for children instead. So weak. And for somebody like Sean Atwood who accuses his own critics of being cowards and paid for by pedo elites, this is the most cowardly thing I've seen for a long time. And the pedo elites must sure be happy about his decision to completely drop all further exposing of them. And by exposing again, I mean reading the paper to people who don't read the paper. It was a good gig that he had, and he maybe should have tried not to mess it up, issuing so many false copyright strikes in quick succession against his critics, against the Daddy Gate podcast channel, against the What Is Truth podcast channel, and also against True Media, among others, is not going to put him in good stead. It's not going to help his appeal. Submitting false strikes against people is dragging YouTube into legal territory. They have to get in the middle of a legal battle for a second. And it is very likely to be more expensive than just a normal dispute between two users on YouTube. There's no doubt that it actually costs YouTube money every time you file a false claim. And we did warn him about this repeatedly when we were asking him to remove his strikes, but he didn't bother replying to any requests to remove the strikes, so counter strikes had to be filed, and he lost every single one of them one by one because he DMCA struck creators when he had no right to do so. It's as if he thought he was going to be the first person ever to appear in court and be given a free pass to use the copyright system to squash criticism. It was never going to happen. Anyway, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent, but the point is that it's ironic he would hashtag censorship while he tries to censor others and then willingly censor himself at the feet of YouTube if they will just give him back his channel and he promises he won't use his channel for any of the things that he claims he's being censored for anyway. The things that he claims make up his life's mission. And he even says, I've learned my lesson. Now the next message we get is that YouTube have acknowledged receipt of his appeal and a further call for action. And then he publicly pulls Corey Feldman into the mix, tweeting out that YouTube are banning Sean Atwood because his Corey Feldman video was classed as cyberbullying, and he ats Corey Feldman in this. Not sure how Corey Feldman is meant to do anything about Sean Atwood's video breaching guidelines, but there we are. In this tweet, we also get to see the email that Atwood received telling him his channel was being deleted. As you can see there, it says, We've issued a third strike against your account and your channel has been permanently removed from YouTube. As we mentioned in previous emails, repeated or severe violations of our community guidelines can result in account termination. Going forward, you will be prohibited from accessing, possessing or creating any other YouTube channels. Now that's an email that nobody likes to see who's got a channel, so don't get me wrong, 
it definitely sucks to see that email. I don't want to see anyone's income taken away or their livelihood removed, but Mr Atwood's friends and allies have been mocking his critics for getting this very same email, for having the very same blow of losing their channel that they worked hard to create, for having that same feeling of frustration and helplessness when they were trying to get their channel back from YouTube. And Atwood's allies and his cronies were mocking it hard right up until the day before Atwood got banned. His team were posting very snide comments laughing at people for losing their channels and posting video after video calling censorship a win. There was even a video saying that BitChute agreed to ban the What Is Truth podcast from their platform. It was completely false. BitChute were contacted for comment and said they'd never heard of the person making the claims and they invited the What Is Truth podcast to set up a presence on BitChute. These are the kinds of snaky people that Atwood surrounds himself with, people who approve of censorship and revel in the downfall of others that they deem as their enemies. But there we are. As I say, I don't think anyone should have their livelihood taken away. But equally, you should never be relying on YouTube alone as an income, especially if you're controversial, or indeed if you repeatedly break the rules like Mr Atwood does. I'm sure he'll be fine anyway because we've been told that he's a stock market millionaire who turned £50 into £5 million, so I'm sure he can just do that again with a few strategic investments. Now the final thing I wanted to point out here was the ridiculous things that Mr Atwood is retweeting. He's always had a thing for calling his critics paedophiles. First of all, he was trying to bring down paedophiles by filming a fetishised faux sexual abuse video with an autistic sex trafficking victim, and then he was trying to say that myself and others are paid for by elite pedos. Elite pedos that he's promised not to talk about again, of course, if he gets his channel back. But surely he wouldn't start calling YouTube pedos, would he? Oh wait, yes, it's Sean Atwood we're talking about. Of course he's calling YouTube pedos. How could I have been so naive? Yes folks, he's actually retweeting some extremely hot takes, such as this one here. It says, YouTube, at Team YouTube, an absolutely disgusting move on free speech. There must be friends in your circle who are part of the whole child sex trafficking ring, aye? Did he get too close? Sean Atwood retweeted that. And also, we've got this bad boy. It says, WTF YouTube, are you all pedos? That one couldn't even be more direct if it tried. So for Mr Atwood to retweet this stuff with YouTube tagged in it, direct accusations that YouTube is staffed by pedos, does he really think that's a good basis for an appeal? A good background to have your appeal being filed over? I mean, he said he'd spoken to his lawyer and his advisors. Again, I would sack them all and hire a proper PR firm because this ain't it, as the kids say on Twitter. So summing up then, Mr Atwood's technique here appears to be, and please tell me if I'm wrong in the comments, but it appears to be tweet out that he's being censored for exposing child sex abuse cases, which he even says himself are already in the media, and then make sure to hashtag human rights and censorship of course, then beg YouTube for his channel back, promising that he's learned his lesson and saying that he will no longer expose any child sex abuse cases, alienating almost half of his audience no doubt, and then drag Corey Feldman into it for some reason, asking Corey Feldman to make YouTube give him his channel back. And then in the meantime he keeps retweeting accusations that the people at YouTube may be pedos. I mean if this works he deserves his channel back, that's all I can say. And he may yet get it, I've seen stranger things happen when it comes to YouTube. But it does look to me that Mr Atwood is starting to get a little bit more desperate as time goes on. Anyway folks, I'm going to leave that one there. Please keep me updated in the comments if there are any further developments on this. And please don't forget to smash the subscribe button. The channel had been slowly creeping up to 10,000 and actually got to 10,000 subs on the day that Sean Atwood's channel got banned, which is one of the most poetic things I've ever witnessed, especially as I have it on good authority that he literally hates me. 
I'm sure this will help smooth things over between us. And of course, please subscribe to the other channels that I've mentioned that he has censored and tried to censor, those being True Media and the What Is Truth podcast on Odyssey. I'll put all the links down below for everything and hopefully I will catch you in the comments. Thanks again for tuning in folks and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.